welcome to another video. So today I'm going to reveal my new car. It's the, the choice I made for my new daily driver. I've got a Volkswagen T5 camper van that I've been using as a daily driver but don't really think it's suitable. I wanted something maybe slightly more comfortable or a lot more comfortable, quieter and a little bit better on fuel. So previous video I went through a few options that I was considering and uh, I'll uh, now reveal <laughs> what I've chosen and uh, let you know how pleased I am with it. So here is the reveal. So it's a 2009 XF 3 litre turbo diesel. It's not the S model. It is an exceptional condition for its year. The worst parts on the car is a little bit of road rash around the wheels. Tyres are in okay condition, they're Dunlop tyres so they're, they're okay tyres. There's no dinks or scratches anywhere on the bodywork at all. So the car is a little bit dirty at the moment. So it's just a little bit of rash around the edge of here as well. I think three of the four wheels are like that, so they'll need to be refurbished at some point. I see twin tailpipes on this model. What I am impressed with is the size of the boot. It just seems to go back forever. Space saver spare wheel under there with all of the kit and a good battery. So I chose to go for one of the highest spec uh, models. Uh, this is the premium luxury. The one above it is the portfolio. Uh, the reason for that, I wanted something that didn't have the sport suspension, something that was gonna be a comfortable cruiser, something quiet. And I wanted leather interior. The models below uh, the premium luxury, so the luxury, for example, it's got imitation leather in it, although it says it's leather, it's, I think they call it bonded leather. So, although that doesn't make a lot of difference, it's just something that I wanted. And a car of this age, the price difference between a luxury and a premium luxury isn't a huge amount. So, I'll just show you what the features are of this particular car, or at least some of them. Um, I won't do a full review at this point because I'm still learning about the car. So you have the armrest, it's got a power connector in there, two cup holders under here, and a nice cubby hole there, currently keeping the keys. You've got an electric parking brake, you've got the various modes for traction control and cruise control, etc. And of course, start stop button with your automatic selectors. As far as infotainment, obviously it's a little bit dated, or very dated, this being a 2009 model. So I would imagine this is probably the similar setup, or the same setup as the original model when it came out. The radio's okay, sounds okay, it's certainly good enough for me. Automatic climate control, you've got front and rear demisters, and front heated screen as well, which is quite nice. So the leather, I believe the leather, certainly the seat facings are leather. The roll tops across the door and also the dashboard, that's all leather as well. On the um, steering wheel, we got uh, cruise control, you've got the radio controls, automatic lights, um, automatic wipers. Now what I do like about the automatic wipers is that is a multiple adjuster around there that reduces and increases the sensitivity of the uh, the wipers which is excellent it does have the let's switch the ignition partly on it does have the electric 
adjuster on the steering wheel and that's got a memory function as well let's turn that off door mirrors fold in and it has got front and rear parking sensors this being the 3 litre turbo diesel it's not excellent on fuel I'm finding I average high 30s to mid 40s depending on the type of journeys that I'm doing which I think is quite acceptable I found one thing I don't like about the car so far when you get in and out of the car on both sides you've got to be very careful with your knee so just here there's a nice sharp bit that comes out that if you catch your knee on very very sore glove compartment I think is really cool touch button so there's not actually a button there so I've got the full handbook with all the documents so the important thing is the service portfolio the service book so it shows it's on the original number plate it was registered 11th of September 2009 in Sidcup in Kent in the UK but what's really impressive is the servicing so this was a year later, it had done 3,683 miles. Year 2, 7,400 miles. Year 3, 11,009 miles. And you notice all of these are the same dealer that they bought the car from, Jaguar main dealer. It continues next year, 12,171, 14,230, all the way through so this is the last service done by the place that I bought the car from I did a service on the 14th of February and changed the cam belt for me as well but just look at the mileage so basically this is a 14 year old car it's done 27,000 miles full Jaguar service history one owner car in great condition I personally think it's a bargain it drives just like new it smells like new and um, I think it's gonna be a good daily driver certainly pleased so you got wooden inserts on the door again leather roll top across the top tiny mark on there I'm hoping that will just um, clean away but Apart from that, I think the interior is completely unmarked. So I think we've got the legroom here that they forgot to put in the back of the XK8 and XKR. Just seems ample. This one hasn't got the optional sunroof, but the seats are super comfortable and the leather feels really soft. And uh, it's got a little bit of a smell of leather as well still, which uh, I'm a bit surprised about especially as modern leathers don't tend to smell like leather like the old ones used to. So if you want to see more of uh, the videos that I do on the IXKR, this XF, the Jeep I've got and the uh, T5, then please subscribe, please like, please share the videos, please comment. There'll be a lot more content to come this year. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Mm.